Um, this is Mogi Beth, and I'm here today actually with my employee Josie. Hi. Um, we have a video for you today that I think is going to be so helpful, especially if you're just starting out because Josie here does not have a Poshmark <laughs> closet or even the app, right? Yeah. Did you download the app yet? No. <laughs> okay, well, you go ahead and start downloading okay. the app. So today we um, are going to run you through how to set up the app. Obviously the first uh, step is downloading it and then um, how to set up your Poshmark closet in case you ever want to sell stuff from your closet because she has some stuff that um, she hasn't worn in a while and that she she could be making money on so just like I'm sure y'all do too before we get start I just wanted to mention that you can use my code Mogi Beth m-o-g-i-b-e-t-h to get five dollars off um, on your first purchase on Poshmark yeah make sure you use that code <laughs> you open. Uh, I'll link that down in the comments below so that um, y'all can use that and I really would appreciate if you did so the first step in starting Poshmark closet is downloading the app and then when you download the app, you're going to have two choices of how to sign in. Um, the first choice is going to be through Facebook, and then the second choice is going to be through email. Um, I recommend doing email, just because you don't know if this is going to become something that uh, you want to do full time. And like I did when I just downloaded the app, I used um, a username I ended up changing and I used my Facebook because I thought it was just gonna be something that I made a few purchases on and then you know never used again. But now it's my full-time job. So set yourself up for success and uh, use um, an email. And then when you're signing in, you're gonna have to choose a username or a closet name as well. And like I said, I think I my first username was like my first initial and my last name, which is not fun or sexy at all. <laughs> uh, what I told Josie is to choose a username that really reflects your style or reflects the type of clothes that you wanna sell in the long term so that when customers are coming to your closet, they get an instant sense of what you're all about. What's the username that you chose? Channeling Chic. <laughs> Channeling Chic, which I think is so cool. Do you wanna talk about why you chose that? Um, I just feel like my clothes are really like statement pieces and I just felt like that represented my whole wardrobe. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Okay, so she's filling out um, the information, uh, which is going to be your first step. Filling out your first name, your last name. But something I'll note here is that when you first start out, you're instinct is going to be to gain a lot of followers because on Instagram or YouTube or whatever that's what we are used to doing and in the beginning I tried to get so many followers I was obsessed with getting a hundred thousand followers for some reason I spent like hours and hours trying to get followers and one way that's quick to get followers is to put an exclamation point in front of your first name. Look at any list of people, the people with exclamation points before their first name usually get um, on the top of the list. However, I'm gonna say don't worry about that. In, in the case that you want to gain a lot of followers, that is a like a quick trick, but I really don't think it's important. Followers are not important whatsoever <laughs> on Poshmark. Um, what's important is listing and sharing. So uh, just don't waste your time like I did. Okay, she's filled out everything and then in the invite code, that's where she's gonna put um, M-O-G-I-B-E-T-H if you want $5 off your first <laughs> purchase using my code. Also on this page, you are going to put your profile photo. And what I'm gonna recommend is to use a photo of yourself and initially when i started my closet and i started you know kind of getting serious i used a logo that i made on canva which was fine um it, it looked okay but um i was trying to look professional but what i realized over time is that people connect with people so when they're scrolling through you know the people that shared their closet or whatever they're going to connect with the photos where they can like really kind of see who you are but josie picked out a photo of herself that kind of um expresses you know her closet who she is all of that and then push create now um it's going to ask for your sizing information which is basically just entering in your shoe size like your clothing size and then that way whenever you're shopping you can go over to the side where there are filters you can just click my size and you don't have to see any of the clothes that aren't your size well and then you can 
pick some brands that you're interested in. I think some people do look at this information. So you might want to choose brands that you love or plan on selling here. It's, you know, not that important, but I think every little detail does make a difference. I would personally skip to find your friends just because if you link your Facebook, your Twitter, or your Tumblr, Poshmark is going to insist that you share your listings to those social platforms every time you share your clothing. So I had it linked for a while and all of a sudden I figured out that on my Pinterest page and my Twitter page there was just like a spam of me sharing all my clothes. <laughs> and my, one of my friends texted me one day and was like, your Pinterest is obnoxious. <laughs> and so I didn't even realize I was doing it. So I would say don't link your social. <laughs> so next, your um, closet door is open. You are active and ready to start. And we're gonna go to um, your closet, which is in the bottom right hand corner. This is kind of your command page to find everything. It's automatically going to put your profile picture as your cover photo. So click edit profile, edit header image. So I um, sent Josie the link to a place that is really good for free stock photography. It's called unsplash.com. I'll link it down below. And I told her to pick a photo that really kind of represented her style or her aesthetic. So now her boutique is all set up. Since she has no reviews yet, um, it's really important that the rest of everything looks really professional so that she can gain you know a little bit of credibility and look like a reliable person um, to shop from so the more she knows what she's doing and the more she has you know customized and edited every facet of her closet um, the more people are going to trust her and be likely to purchase from her so the next and last step in order to just set up the base um, structure of your closet is to go to about you're going to scroll down and until you see meet the posture then click on that that is actually gonna be a listing in your closet that people can click on to get to know you in this you're gonna edit it on the top right hand corner you're gonna push edit and you're gonna write something a little bit more personalized so Josie wrote her about page and I think it's really good I think it totally um, reflects her closet so you want to go ahead and read it yeah hi my name is Josie channeling chic is about embracing your style and feeling fabulous while doing it I hope you find something in my closet that makes you feel like your most confident self. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them my way. I would love to help. Yay, awesome. That listing is actually going to come up whenever um, anyone visits her closet. Since she has no other listings right now, you know, that's kind of important. But that is the next step is that we're gonna create some listings and we're gonna do a little haul of what she uh, picked up from her closet to sell, which honestly, in the beginning, is going to look very different than when you start sourcing clothes. But I definitely recommend to start with clothes in your closet. I think it's a really, really affordable way to really um, make a little money and get a little experience on the Poshmark app before you invest any kind of money into the business itself. So we are going to um, show you what she got and then we'll tell you the next steps from there. So we're going to do a haul. Here are the items that she chose. Okay. This I got at Dillard's and it's GB and I love this dress because of the ruffles and the neckline is so pretty, but it was just too short, so. Okay, yeah, that's, I love that. Let's look at the tag. It's, so, I think that's Gianni Binney. Is that how you pronounce it? And it's actually new with tags, so that's really cool. Um, she'll have at least one piece in her closet. And it's new with tag. And this I got at Target. <laughs> it's so cute. It is... Massimo. I, I don't know how to pronounce it either. Mosimo, Mosimo, yeah. something like that. <laughs> and so, I love the sleeves. Yeah. They just make the dress. Yeah, so these are like ruched gathered sleeves that have a bell sleeve at the end. And this is chambray. So those are like some good keywords to use. It's kind of like a chambray shift dress with gathered bell sleeves. This I also got at Target. It is Mosimo. Awesome. And I love the bottom. I love how it's like a high-low, but it's like not a dress. Yeah. Because you don't see that a lot in tops. That's super cute. It's like a crochet lace. <laughs> yeah. This I got at Francesca's. And the brand is... What is that brand? I see it all the time. Buttons? Is that what it says? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cute. Yeah, and I love the top, how it's like a harsh top, but then a flowy bottom. Mm-hmm, yeah, the contrast is really cute. This, I also got a Target. 
cute. It is Mosimo. And I love how it's like off the shoulder, but it's a short sleeve. So yeah. In the summer. Yeah. So this is called a cold shoulder, which is really cute. I like that. It's perfect for summer. Does it have pockets? Yes. Yes, pockets. <laughs> <laughs> this I got at American Eagle. It's just a great tank top to wear in the summer. I love that floral print. All yes. right, there. Just in case y'all haven't seen American Eagle tag, <laughs> that's what it looks like. And then this I got at Francesca's. The brand is, is, is Dana Oh yeah, I see that all the time. I never knew what it was. Oh, yeah, this is crochet lace again. It's pretty. Yeah. It's a pretty color. Oh, it's like ribbed down here. So that's kind of a cool contrast. And then this, I'm pretty sure I got at TJ Maxx. The brand is mine. I like that a lot because it's you could tuck it into a high waisted pants yeah, yeah. or and I like how this skirt. Is open. Yeah, that's really cute. Perfect for spring. This is the piece de resistance. Yes. <laughs> it's super it's beautiful. I'm in love with this dress. Um I got it at Etsy. This is actually the back. That's the front. <laughs> pretty. Oh, I love that. Okay, so you got it for prom, right? Yes. Okay. And I don't know this brand, maybe someone out there does. It's really pretty. But it's very, she's really into 1920s inspired pieces. And I think this is like that right there, that beading work, I think is so 1920s and so pretty. And it's perfect for prom season. Someone's going to love that. Yes. This I got at Francesca's and the brand is Buttons and it's a romper. So cute. Yeah, it's just so cute. I love the stripes. And you just don't like rompers, right? Yeah, I, like rompers. I can have rompers. <laughs> yeah, well, some people like me love them, so someone will love that. <laughs> this I got at Target, and the brand is Mosimo. And it's just a good tank top to wear with, like, you can pair it with, like, an olive green jacket. Yeah. It's just a good under piece. I love the, like, boxy uh, neckline that's so 1990s. <laughs> so cute. It's really cute. This, I do not know where I got this, but the brand is LOD. If y'all know where this brand is from, let us know in the comments down <laughs> below. <laughs> and I love how the front is just so simple and the back is completely open lace. Yeah, that's pretty. And then this I got at The Limited. And it's a really good sweater to wear in the winter, which also has this under part cute yeah it's a nice contrast i like that i like how it's really thick knit like it's yeah it seems really good quality and it's in perfect condition in the thrift store it's really hard to find things that are white that um, don't have tons of flaws on them true. um this i got at von mar and the brand is lush if y'all don't have a von mar it's like a big department store kind of like nordstrom and i love the cross at the top and also it has like it, the sleeve gets oh, yeah. smaller thin. Yeah, that looks really cute. And the back has an. Oh, it has. Too. Oh yeah, like a keyhole. Cute. Yeah. And this is the final piece from Charlotte Rouge. I love that. And it's really boho, kimono yeah. style. Yeah. These um, ta what are they called? Fringe is so in right now. It's really cute. I think that will sell really well. Okay, so as y'all can see, a lot of her pieces. Our Wrigley. What we need to do next is um, to steam the clothes. And y'all probably at home don't have this like industrial grade um, rack. You don't need one and when you're just starting out. Um, but in case you do want one for whatever reason, I'll link it down below. What you're going to want to do is get a steamer. And so if you don't have a steamer at home, you can get a handheld one at Target for I think like $30 or one um, online that's a little better. And what we have is a Jiffy steamer, which is like $200. So don't invest in a Jiffy steamer right off the bat unless you want one for your personal wardrobe. They are like the best steamers ever. If you are doing this at home, you just want to go through each item, um, hang it up on some kind of hook you have in your house, and then just steam. I really prefer the batch method system. So that what that means is doing all your steaming at once, all your measuring at once, all your photographing at once, all your listing at once. Um, some people, they steam, measure, um, photograph, and list every item at once instead of doing the batch method. And if that is what works for you, go for it. But I think this is the most efficient way, the fastest way, and also um, just the most enjoyable way because you can kind of get in the zone when you're measuring or when you're steaming or whatever. I recommend putting in headphones and picking out a podcast or picking out an audiobook or music that you love. So one other tip I have with steaming, 
This is old and raggedy, but this is a steaming glove and I'll link it down below, but it's so helpful. It's actually like fairly affordable and it's just so you don't burn yourself, which I have done like a million times. So with one hand you're holding the steamer and the other hand you're using this. What you can do is when you're steaming, you can hold it up against like this and then pr uh, press it down. So then you have a taut and even surface to steam on instead of trying to like hold it up and do it. It really provides a lot of, you know, accuracy when you're steaming. Josie's gonna go ahead and steam all her clothes and then we'll measure is the next step and we'll show you how we measure each different type of item. So it's the next day, we're wearing new clothes. Now we need to measure our clothes. Josie is going to go ahead and measure all the clothes she is listing. And then I've also included a skirt and pants that are going to be listed in my closet soon as well, just to show you what different measurements that we do include in our listings. It's definitely not an exhaustive list. You can do more, um, but these are kind of like the bare minimum, in my opinion, that you want to include. So while Josie measures um, her items and these other few different things, I'm going to talk you through what those measurements are. Okay, y'all. So for skirts, we start out with the waist measurement, and that's just the very top of the skirt from side to side. Then the hip, me hip measurement. Um, which is at the hips, just the width of that, and then the length. Skirts are honestly the easiest just because it only requires those three measurements. Next up, we have pants. So we're going to start with the waist measurement once again. And then we are going to do the rise measurement. And so that's from the inside seam up until the top. Then the next measurement we're going to do is probably the most important measurement. It is the inseam measurement. So it's from that inside seam where the two seams meet, um, kind of in the crotch area, down to the bottom of the pant. And then the length measurement, which is just the full length of the pant. So the next thing we have is a romper, and you can use these measurements for jumpsuits and overalls as well. But you're going to start out with the chest measurement. She's stretching it out a little too wide here, as you can see the material stretch. Um, but that is going to be from pit to pit. Um, and then we're going to do the waist measurement. And then, um, because this is both the top and pants in one, we are going to do uh, the rise again. And um, that again is just where the two seams meet in the crotch up until the very top of the waist. And then we're going to do the inseam measurement, um, similar to how we do pants. Um, and then on this one, since it's a romper, we're going to do the short length. So that's from the top of the waist down. And then we're going to do the full length. So from the top of the shoulder. Um, down to the bottom. If this was a long sleeve um, jumpsuit or romper, we would also do a shoulder measurement and a arm measurement as well. Next up, we have dresses. And so we're going to do the chest measurement, which is pit to pit again. Um, this is probably the most requested measurement. So it's good to make sure you get that one right. Um, and then we're going to do the waist measurement, which is just wherever the dress would fall on the natural waist. And then the arm measurement, which is the top of the shoulder down to the wrist. And then we are going to flip it around and we're going to do a shoulder measurement, which is um, from one shoulder seam to the next. And then the final 
measurement for dresses is going to be a full length measurement. So the top of the shoulder down to the hem. The last category is tops. And we've gone over most of these measurements, but again, we're going to do chest, which is pit to pit. Um, try not to stretch that out. And then we're going to do arm, which is that shoulder seam down to the wrist. And then we are going to do the shoulder measurement, which is uh, one shoulder seam to the next. And on here you would probably want to go a little bit more up than she is, so um, make sure it's shoulder seam to shoulder seam. And finally, we're going to do length, which is from the top shoulder seam down to the hem. And there you have it. Those are the measurements that I include in all of my listings that I recommend you include as well. Um, super easy. All right, so now that we've measured all of the clothes, um, the next step is photographing. What I do recommend is starting out, if you do have one, just a white wall. Um, that's what I do now. If you don't have a white wall, choose a neutral color wall or choose maybe a white door that you have. Um, all you need is just like a nail and a hammer. Put up the nail um, and then use some hangers um, that are appealing. Don't use like wire hangers that you get from the dry cleaners. Um, I often use wooden hangers, but these velvet hangers also work. So you're just going to hang it up like you would here. Um, and then you're going to take a photo of the front, a photo of the back, fitting the entire item. And Poshmark gives you eight photos in total that you can use. So um, if you want to make a cover photo you can either do the one that's like forward facing you can model the photo which we might um do if you <laughs> if you want um we might try that out or um you know poshmark does not allow you to use um the photos from the retail place but you know if you're on poshmark you see that everyone does so if you want to use the stock photo how you can all that's also an option um for now she, josie is just going to photograph all her pieces so she's going to do one of the front one of the back and then at least six photos of some details the six photos that i usually include are the top the back so how it closes if it's a zipper or hook eye closure or a keyhole closure or a button closure um and then I include the tag of the brand and the size on there as well. And then if it's new with tag, you want to show that the tags are included. So go ahead and take a photo of the tag. And then any details on there that are unique. So she might take a close-up of like the beadwork here or maybe um, the bottom hem, whatever she thinks um, is a unique selling feature of the piece. Once you've taken those eight photos, go on to your next piece, get them all done and on your phone. When you're taking the photo on your phone, I recommend using square mode. That way, uh, when you're posting to Poshmark, they do square listings, so you can just automatically load them from there. However, with pieces like this that are really long, um, you can use a full photo, um, I think it's just like picture photo uh, mode and get the full piece in there. Um, and then you can use the app Square Fit, which I'll link below, um, and it will just add like a white border to the side and that way it can look, you know, kind of professional and neat while still including the entire piece and, th and that way you can really get a lot of the details in there um, that you couldn't get if you were just using square mode trying to fit this really long piece. So <laughs> Josie is going to get started. Um, she's got a few pieces to photograph and then um, I will show you how to list the item.
So now that we have gathered our clothes, we've steamed them, we measured them, we photographed them, we are now going to list them. And we're going to edit the cover photos. So Josie actually took a few cover photos of her modeling day clothes, which I would recommend. It does take time, but I think that is the best way um, to get uh, eyeballs to your listing. But most of the listings that we are going to um, put in her closet are going to just be of the clothes hanging up. So I'm going to show you how to edit those photos. Okay, so after we've edited our photos, we're going to list everything in our Poshmark closet so that they can sell. And um, we are, I'm going to walk you through that, just do a little screen share of that process. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but there are some keywords that you definitely want to include because Poshmark descriptions are searchable. So if someone is searching for a chambray dress, if it's in your title or description, it will come up um, under that search engine on Poshmark. So um, the description is very, very important and I just wanna show you how we do that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. Okay y'all, so I am going to um, edit both a cover photo that Josie modeled and a hanging cover photo. Um, the first app I use for all my editing is Snapseed. That is my primary app. So I went ahead and opened it here. And I'm just going to choose that photo. This is actually a pretty good photo to start out with. Um, but I always start with tools and then tune image. I'm going to up the brightness a little bit. Go down to contrast. I like to add a lot of contrast to my photos. Saturation, I add a little bit, but this one doesn't need that much. Ambiance, I generally add a good amount of. Highlight, definitely, it's going to um, make that background more white, but we'll also fix that in a second. Shadow, because this is a black piece, I'm going to um, go down a little bit just so the black is a little bit more uh, saturated. And at any point, if you want to see uh, what it looks like compared to the original photo, you can hold down um, the screen there and compare the two. And then warmth, I typically don't um, play around with this too much. I'm just going to add it a little bit blue um, since the background is a little yellow, uh, but we can also fix that in one second. So I'm going to click the check mark to save. Okay, so this is the tool that I absolutely love. It's the selective tool. And so I'm going to select this corner here, and I'm going to up the brightness. And this is what's going to give me that white background. And then I'm also going to desaturate it so that any yellow uh, goes away. And I'm just going to do that for all four corners. Okay, last corner. And this is pretty good. I'm going to show you a couple other things that I like to do. Um, one is to go into details and just up the structure a little bit, up the sharpness. That will make the fringe detail look a little bit more sharp. And then sometimes I'll go into curves. And the two I like to use is soft contrast or brighten, just depending on um, what the piece calls for. But I don't think I'm going to use either in this case, just because the contrast has a little bit too much contrast in the brighten really unnecessary here. And so at this piece I'm pretty happy, at this point I'm pretty happy so I'm just going to export and save a copy. And then I'm going to open the hanging photo. This is that romper. Just again do tune image, brightness, contrast is going to be good here because we need it to contrast against that white wall. A little bit of saturation, but we don't want to make those striped yellow. So actually, yeah, I'm not going to do any saturation. Um, Ambiance, um, I think we're going to go this way. Well, no, I think this way is okay. A highlight, definitely a good amount of highlight on this one. A little bit of shadow. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth. Just a smidge. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing here with selective. This will actually grab some of the stripes as well, which is not a bad thing. 
Um, since the stripes are white, it's going to grab like things. If you want to like lessen it, you could do this with two fingers. Okay, just kind of push and pull. Okay, so it looks okay. It's not like super eye-catching at this point, so I'm going to play around with the curves. That looks a lot better, just because we're getting more of that uh, chambray popping through. So I'll go ahead and add that. Let's see what bright brightening it up does. I think that is much better as well. Um, we'll add some detail. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let me just show you one more thing. If there was any area that you really wanted, could not um, get white with the selective feature, you could go in, I'll show you again, to the brush, click exposure, go up, and I'll actually click the eyeball so I can see exactly where it is. And this is literally going to be like a paintbrush to paint it white. Um, you can even zoom in and get really close up and in here. And I used to do this a lot, but it's very time consuming. But just, you know, a tool that you can use and have at your disposal. Maybe I'll do a little bit down here. This has a little bit of yelling. Oops. Um, okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to click X. All right, so I am going to. Is this yellow down here? I don't think that's bad. Okay, so I'm going to save a copy. And there we have it, we have two cover photos all done. Okay, so one other app that I wanted to show you is Color Story. And I like Color Story because you can batch edit photos. So I don't typically use Color Story for um, my cover photos, but I do use them. I use Color Story for Instagram, and then I also use it to batch edit the remaining photos on my listing. So you can go into Albums, and then you can scroll and select, um, click select in the upper right hand corner, as many as you want. So for the purposes of this, I will just choose these photos, click batch edit. And then they have filters, effects, tools. I'm going to go into tools first, click adjust. Um, I would like to increase the brightness typically. I like to increase the contrast, the clarity. I usually go on brightness again. Vibrance usually, especially if it's not white. This one's white, so it's a little bit difficult, but um, you can do the temp, but I don't think I'm just going to keep it as it is here. And then you can click the little home button and do filters, and I really like to do pop. And I won't do it as quite as much, but... And then you can review, and then just save, and it'll take a minute or two, um, just because it's editing all of those photos at once, but that way all of your photos are kind of edited under these same um, filters, and so they all are going to look streamlined and um, cohesive and you can just include all of those in your listing. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I list um, an item. So we're going to click on sell and then we are going to go in and choose our photos that we want to add to the listing. So here's cover photo. We're going to choose all those photos. I think I have one other. There we go. All right. We don't need to crop the photos. Um, we don't need to really select a cover shot, even though that's it. We don't need to add filters. Now we're just going to arrange this so that it's in the order that we want. Okay. So we are going to first do the title. So the first thing we're going to put in the title is the brand name Charlotte Ruse, which is now going out of business. 
Um, and then we're going to put black fringe tassel boho kimono and you're going to try to use as many characters as possible that is pretty good so we're going to copy and paste the title and then we are um, going to put next the size so this is a size small and then um, what kind of condition it's in so this is an excellent used condition and then we're going to disclose if there are any flaws so no visible flaws on this item okay so the next thing we're going to do is describe the item and you can either do this in paragraph form or you can do it in list form I'm gonna do it in paragraph form so I'm going to say this boho style kimono is perfect to wear over a graphic tee to a music festival or over your favorite dress to brunch and then I am going to say pair it with distressed Levi's and then I'm going to describe the item and so this is an oversized fit it's got fringe detail along the front and him and I think that's about all of um, the details in this piece just because it is a pretty simple piece so next we're going to um, put the material content so this is a 100% polyester item and then hand wash or machine wash this is hand wash on the tag and then we are going to add our measurements okay so I have the measurements on this Google sheet which is really convenient um, super easy to access so I'm going to copy and paste the measurements here and for this piece all we have is a chest and a length measurements because it has no arm and this will complete our description then the category, um, Poshmark really doesn't have a category for kimonos, so sometimes people will save it under sweaters and cardigans. For this piece, I'm just going to put it under tops and put none. Uh, you can skip quantity and just go to size, size small. Brand is Charlotte Russe. Color is black. Um, the original price, I have no idea what the original price was, so... Um, I'm just going to put zero here, and then the listing price, 20. Oops. All right, then you're going to push next, and then you're going to push list. And you've got a listing up. Okay, y'all, thank you so much for watching this first video. It's going to be a series. So now that we've got all of our um, items listed and photographed and measured and steamed, um, we are going to now um, inventory them and ship them. And I'm also going to show you how to share them. But those are in the next video. So definitely stay tuned and check those out. Um, I think it's going to be really, really, really helpful for you if you're just getting started on Poshmark because I'm going to show you some super simple ways to just make sure you get started on the right foot and don't make the same mistakes I did when I started. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are love making these YouTube videos. It's kind of a fun break in our monotony routine of <laughs> Poshmark. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon if you want notifications every time I post a new video. Um, um, and then follow me on Instagram, MogiBeth, the same name. Follow my Poshmark closet, the same name. And follow Josie's as well. Give her a few shares. Go check out how her listings are doing. But thank you all so much. I love y'all. I hope you're having a fabulous day. And we'll see you next time.
Bye.